because I was standing here in the music today praying and saying, Lord, what is the underlying thing today? And what I felt so strongly in my spirit is there's no doubt someone in this place, even if it's just one, because for me, just one is worth it. That there's someone in this place who it has crossed your mind. All I did when I accepted Jesus was exchange one list of burdens for another list of burdens. And I'm exhausted. And you won't come out and say it because it sounds very unspiritual. But it's crossed your mind in the darkness in a place you don't like to talk about. I wish I had never said yes to Jesus. Because it's just been one long burden ever since. Now, I don't want you to raise your hand. You won't have to. Because the Holy Spirit is already doing some work, already marinating the heart, already tendering you up to let you know that He's not here to punch you, elbow you, browbeat you, condemn you. He's here to say, today's your day. I've heard your cry. I've heard your prayer. I know your heart. I know you're burdened. I know you're struggling. I know you're worn down. But today, we're going to learn what it means to take our first bite of the real meat of the Word. Because what a lot of us need is to slurp on the bottle for a few minutes of the word of righteousness. And I found it in my own walk, even though I know who I am in Christ. I still got to go pull that bottle out once in a while and figure out the word of my righteousness. Because every now and then I can forget just how righteous I am because Paul White gets in the way. And I start to think that what Paul White's doing is righteousness. Paul White's not righteousness. Only in Christ is righteousness. Go, go to Romans 3. I want to give you God's word of righteousness. To me, this is real basic. It's milk. Okay? But that's okay. Because if we're not prepared for strong meat, then we need to get on milk. Let's get on milk for five minutes. Romans chapter 3, verse 21. Paul says this. The righteousness of God apart from the law is revealed. It's being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ to all and on all who believe, for there is no difference. So it doesn't matter who you are. If you believe on Jesus, you receive a righteousness that is apart from the law. A righteousness apart from the law means God counting you righteous apart from you doing anything legally. 23. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Most of us have pulled this verse out and used it as a witnessing tool. We do. We, we use this on the Romans road to salvation. And we fire that right at people and go, everybody's sin falls short of the glory of God. And we miss the context because the context said, listen, we're all in the same boat, Jews and Gentiles alike. Because God doesn't deem man righteous with law. God deems man righteous outside of the law. So it doesn't do you any good to be a Jew bragging that you have the law. God doesn't declare you righteous by having the law. No more than it would do you any good to be a Gentile and go back and try to do good works to please God. Because if you went back and tried to do good works to please God, then you're going back to the law. And Paul says, everybody's fallen short of the glory of God. Every one of us have messed up. We've all failed being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Have you also noticed that we love to quote Romans 3.23, and yet we never quote Romans 3.24? Yeah. Let's read them back to back. One sentence, by the way. It's not a new thought. Everybody has sinned and fallen short of the glory of God being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. How many people have been justified freely by His grace? Let's read it again. This is what you have to do when, you, when you're on milk. Go back to the bottle again. Let's read it again, slowly, carefully. Everyone has sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. How many people have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God? How many people have been freely justified by His grace? Wow. Wow. Seems like we ought to be quoting that verse. I didn't say everybody is saved. Why? Because not everybody has believed on Jesus so they can receive that justification. But in God's eyes, the price has been paid for every single person on the planet. Listen, we can't say that if righteousness comes by what you do. Because not every single person on the planet is doing Right? I mean, not every single person in the building is doing. So if righteousness comes by doing, then you can't say everyone is freely justified by receiving God's grace because they're not freely justified in God's grace. They're justified the moment they start doing or the moment they stop doing. But justification does not wait on people to do the right thing. It's a done deal in the finished work of Christ. Christ didn't go to the cross so you could get saved and then cross your fingers and get home. 
Christ went to the cross so you could be saved from who you used to be so that you can be who he made you to be. Why would God go to all this work to save you and then stop getting you home? I've never understood why he would go to so much work and then the minute he comes out of the grave, he stops and says, now you're on your own. Good luck with all that. Oh, and here's, the book, here's a book about you. Read it so you can figure out how to get home. Oh, come on. 